What's happening? It is Tuesday and we are at the Hack and Pack Shop. I got a, I don't know, I think it's a 2000 or 01. What the hell is this thing? 2000 Chevy S10 Blazer. It took a little hit in the front. Um, I put a used grill on it. Here's the bumper that came off it. It don't look so bad, but it twisted it. It, uh, it ripped it right by the license plate there. Shattered the grill on this corner. Got the headlight. Fender was buckled in a little bit, but I've got the fender straightened out pretty good. Okay, had to do a little pull on the core support. And uh, but anyway, this is a buddy of mine's, and he wants to, well, of course, fix the collision damage, which we're doing. Um, but he wants to two-tone it also. So we're two-toning it. So I'm gonna do a little video on you guys for this. This grill, um, this is a used grill, and I believe it's pewter, 3D2E pewter. Um, at least pewter is the closest thing I could think of, and I said to Larry, I said, hey man, I said, uh, you want a two-tone? I said, how about going with um, pewter with this caramel? That's what they call this brown on here, caramel. Um, I said, it might actually look kind of good. And he's like, yeah man, do whatever you want. He says, you know, I've done vehicles for him before. I did a Grand Dam for him, did some SS stripes, things like that. Um, he says, you got good taste? He says, just do what you want to do with it. I said, all right, Larry. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to two-tone it. So basically is what we're doing. You can see where I've got it already partially sanded. We're just going from this body lip here all the way around down with the pewter, 3D2E, which is actually this color right here. All right, that's what's going on in this Chevy, this pewter color. All right, we're doing rockers and a little bit of box side work on this. The caramel code is 333D. Okay, that's the upper color on this blazer. The lower color is going to be 3D2E, which is the pewter. Okay? And I know a couple of you asked about taping inside of door jams, things like that. Um, a couple of you wanted a video on one of these vehicles. Unfortunately for you guys, um, but good for me, this thing really isn't rotted out. Um, it's a southern vehicle. It did have a couple little very minor pinholes in the rockers here, and I've already fixed them. I just tapped them in, duraglassed them, and then went over them with some regular body filler. Um, but it's basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to prep the paint for doing your two-tone work, how to do the two-tone work. Uh, how to tape the door jams, things like that. So this will be kind of in-depth. It'll probably be a longer video. Um, <clears throat> but unfortunately, the quality of the video, it's not going to be, you know, 480 pixels. I'm sorry for you guys, but it'll take just way too long to upload it. But I'll see what I can do. I'm trying to find some different software so I can make these videos a little more clear for you so you can actually get the real idea um, of how the stuff's done, or you could actually see quality of the work versus things a little bit fuzzy, and I do apologize for that. Um, so yeah, anyway, I've already scotch braided most of this side. scotch braiding around these moldings really, really, really good. I mean, I'm taking the scotch brite and I'm freaking wadding it up and getting right down inside of there. You know, the very best you can without taking the stuff off. Because if you see any shiny, your paint's going to peel wherever you see shiny, okay? No shiny. When you're prepping to paint, you want no shiny. You want a scotch spray. You want the stuff to look like that, not like that, okay? If it looks like that, your stuff's going to peel off in a matter of probably just weeks, all right? So without further ado, let me uh, do a couple more things on this thing, and then we'll continue on this video. All right, on the scotch spray, and this is a scotch spray. I usually rip them in half, okay? Obviously, you see where everything's shiny. I just kind of went around these edges with a DA real quick, but being careful not to hit what we're leaving the caramel color. Okay, so again, you want to press kind of firmly and get right down in there and scuff this stuff up. All right, you see where I just did that, but there's still a little bit of shiny right in there. You want to get that out. It's very, very important, especially when you're doing a little bit of a color change like what we're doing here. We're going over this color with another color okay if the color we're putting on peels it's going to peel to this color it's totally not what you want all right i mean you could go ahead and tape all this off first but i like to scotch bright and then tape even if i scuff it up a little bit into this color it'll still be able to be rubbed out with a buffer or by hand all right but i'd rather do it this way and then I know everything is scuffed, and then when I'm going ahead and scotch writing it, I'm not lifting the tape either. And there's a little bit of stone tex up here. All right, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and try to get some of this out with maybe some 180 by hand and then some 320. 
because these will all show up in the two-tone color. Especially the lighter colors, they'll show that stuff. Especially the light metallics, I should say. White, necessarily not, but the metallics, it'll show it. All right, so the owner of this, this blazer's here, Larry. Say, say hi. How are you doing? All right. So, Larry, you, you drive bus. Yes. You drive bus. All right. You remember back when we worked at the bus company together? Yeah, I remember you know, those days. You used to paint all them white and purple buses. Yeah. Now you're driving nicer buses. <laughs> what the hell does that say? Special. Why the hell does your bus say special? Because I'm special. <laughs> are you? How special are you? Are, are you that special, Larry? Uh, depends on who you talk to. Oh, shit. <laughs> special. Oh, boy. We got the special bus at the Hackett Pack shop. Maybe I should go in there and look some windows just for old times' sake. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Another thing I wanted to add, too, when, when you're uh, scotch bright and especially doing a two-tone or wh whatever you're doing, um, a little bit of the secondary body color is going to be going into this door jam just a little bit. This is the interior rocker panel. All right, so you want to make sure that you get in here good with a scotch brite too. It's very, very, very important, okay? So what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be running a solid tape line, maybe from here or, I don't know, we'll figure it out as we go, but we're going to put a little tape line in here anyway. But the secondary color is going to blow into here, and if you want a clean-looking job, you definitely have to mask off these interior door jams, okay? Um, and also, too, on the edges, of the doors like this you see where this is a little bit chipped up hopefully you can um, this has all got to be sanded out and you want to make sure you get all these edges really really good because it's the first place debris hits like on that edge debris been hitting that okay road salt stones whatever and this is the first place vehicles will start to rust is on the edges of panels see I just scotch sprayed a little bit there and there's a little bit of rust right there so I'm gonna have to take in hand sand or machine sand all this to make sure that's a good and smooth edge um, a lot of people don't think of it when they're painting a car, you know, basically you think you just shut the doors, tape off the windows, you know, do your body work and paint the exterior of the car. And yeah, I have done jobs like that, okay, um, but there's also a little bit better of a way to do it too. And the thing is, is, is the more you take apart and take off, the cleaner of a job you're going to have. Like this back bumper, it had a step pad on it, two step pads, it had a pad up here, a pad down here. All right, this little doohickey here for where you stick the jack in. I still have to take these license plate lights out. And it seems every time I try to take these out, I always freaking break them. But maybe we can get lucky. I know you either push up or push down or push in or push out. I forget the deal. But, um, you know, take the license plate lights off, things like that. Because that's the first place paint's going to chip, too, is, is wherever you can't get in and, and get it scotch braided really good and, and thorough. It's very, 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 very important stuff, guys. Mud flaps got to come off it, which these are going to be a pain in the butt. They got Phillips head screws that are all rusted out in here. Okay, but this stuff's all got to come off. And then up inside these wheel walls, usually I have 180 them, okay, just to kind of get them half ass smooth. There's no rust or whatever, but I usually take 180, put a little bit of extra primer on them, and then go ahead and, and get the thing ready for paint. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my scotch brighton totally finished up. We're going to get these mud flaps off of here. And then we're going to start taping this thing off. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to tape these interior door jams. Now, there is there is two different ways to do it, and we'll get into that. You can hard tape line, or you can uh, put a soft tape line. This vehicle, because we are doing a two-tone, we're going to do a hard tape line, because you don't want a fuzzy edge, okay, for the secondary color to meet the primary color. And, uh, yeah, and we'll turn you back on. One other thing I wanted to show you too is uh, pinstriping. We're going to be changing the pinstripe on this vehicle because this pinstripe, I just, I can't get it quick enough. So we're just going to go with like a double, uh, double silver on it. So I picked up this handy eraser wheel here. There, uh, I think I paid 30 something dollars for it. And basically it's all you do, I'm going to try to do this one handed. Just take that little eraser wheel and it magically takes the stripes away. Just like that. All right, I got it kind of on a low setting here just for filming purposes. And so I can hold it easier with one hand. All right, just like the same, same material that's on a pencil eraser. All right, takes that stuff right off there. If you miss a spot, you can just peel it right off with your thumbnail. So it's a pretty handy tool. Okay, this is an old stripe. I mean, this stripe, 
you know, I could try peeling it, which I did earlier, and you will get a little way with it, and then it breaks, okay? So that's why they make this pinstripe eraser. It's good for decals, too. Um, but the, the tool's not cheap, okay? It's, uh, you know, like I said, it's about 30 bucks. And you could probably uh, de-pinstripe, I don't know, six, eight cars with it, maybe more. Depends on how much graphics or whatever is on it. But it's definitely a good thing to have, so I thought I'd show you that. And then my killer deal I got, the wall, it's only, what, a nine volt? 9.6 volt uh, cordless drill. I got it at the bargain center for five bucks with no battery. I'm like, oh, I'll take the chance for five bucks. Mother DeWalt's a 12 volt, which I got the 12 volt battery in here. It plugged and played. So now I got another uh, cordless drill. So this is the first time I've used this today. Um, seems to work good though. Five bucks, how can you beat it? All right, on to the next thing. Now we're starting on the taping. I'll show you guys what I've done here so far. Um, I know a couple of you wondered about taping on the inside of door jams and things like that. Um, because, like I mentioned before, like because we're doing a two-tone, it's going to be a solid tape edge. Okay? They do make a tape where you can, it's uh, it's shaped like a tube, and you st just stick it in here, shut the door, and it gives you a nice fuzzy line so you don't have any hard tape edge. I think they used to call it door departure tape, something like that. Okay? Um, but because we are putting a lighter color here, we do want a good crisp hard edge for our two-tone. It looks a lot more professional. And as you also see here, I put a little bit of tape on the inside of the store and I'm letting it stick out quite a ways because otherwise that lighter color, that lighter paint will blow through and get all up inside of the door jam here. You'll have like a weird, you know, lighter colored fuzzy line. All right, so we're gonna shut the door. And if you look down in here, you can see where that green tape is inside of there. All right, that's gonna prevent the overspray from blowing in all over um, on the eye post in there, okay? Same thing here, I ran a good line. You know, I went up about an inch and a half or so, ran a good crisp line all the way around all this. So basically that's the outline of what's gonna be two-tone. Pretty much from that green tape down um, is gonna be the lighter color. The moldings are taped off real nice and tight. I taped right to that edge, took my fingernail and pushed it down inside of there just to make sure the tape's all in there very good. And that's another thing too. Um, when you're taping, you got to make sure everything's pushed down. You got to just, you know, rub and rub and rub, just like that. And make sure everything's down because if one little edge lifts, you're going to have a little fuzzy spot and it's going to look like hell. And then basically from here up, we'll just go ahead and take some paper and we'll paper all that up and cover up the rest of the vehicle. The mud flaps, I'm leaving them on there. I don't feel like screwing around with them. I already talked to him about it. You don't even care, okay? Um, so I'm sanding around them the best I can, taping them, okay? And we're just gonna roll with it that way because I don't feel like spending an hour and a half pulling all these wheels and getting in there with a freaking hammer and a Phillips head screwdriver and trying to beat all that crap out. Um, this thing's actually gotta go in the morning. So he's got a rental car right now. Back bumper had a little bit of a weird whoop de doo here so I just took a little bit of icing and just filled that. There was no hole in it, just a real nasty crease. There is a little bit of a high spot here. I'm not going to go too crazy with the icing. The icing's not really that flexible for where it is. It's fine, but if we put too much on it, it's going to be no good. So basically, that's where we're at so far. I'm going to go ahead and paper this all up and show you guys. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of primer on this thing. The bodywork is all done. I've taken it all. I've blown all the area off. I've taken some wax and grease remover. I waxed and grease removed everything. All right, basically a wet rag with your wax and grease remover, a dry wet rag to wipe that stuff off. Um, I did that before I even started taping, otherwise the tape wouldn't stick. There's a little bit of arm roll on this thing, there's a little bit of wax on it, some wax residue like you just waxed it not too long ago, so I don't want to uh, take the risk of getting fish eyes and my tape not sticking. So that's where we're at right now. I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, start papering everything up, and uh, then we'll show you the the total um, papered off, taped off project, and then I'm gonna go ahead and apply some primer on it. All right, we got everything taped off. Um, unfortunately, I got the paint gun in the other hand here, so I'm not gonna really walk you around, okay? But the first color we're putting on is the Carmo. We're using a cheap touch-up gun. We're just gonna start laying this paint on here. This color to me looks dark. We're going to make sure we get the front edge really good. Get this in interior edge of the fender good. 
okay? I'm just gonna walk it back here just a little bit. And now we're just gonna let it set. We're gonna put three coats of the smoky caramel on it, and then we gotta let this dry for about probably a good half hour. And then we'll go ahead and we'll tape off the rest of the fender, and then we can put the tan on it, and then we're gonna peel all this paper off it, but we're gonna leave on what we're not painting, but we're gonna peel the paper off to split up the two-tone on this fender. Now we're gonna go ahead and clear everything all at once. Is it dry yet? Nope. Is it dry yet? Nope. Is it dry yet? No, oh, Chooch, it's not dry yet. Some bitch. Yeah, some bitch. All right, our three coats of base coat are on for the caramel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out the two-tone part of it. We're going to cover up all this caramel color so only this lower color will be exposed. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, spray the lower color. So usually when I do stuff like this, I just do it by eye. Seems to work. Didn't hear any complaints yet, at least to my face. Push it down real nice and firm. Just like that. <clears> that gives you guys an idea. From here down, it's going to be the uh, pewter. This paint's been sitting about 20 minutes should be cured. Base coat cures very quickly. This is what we're doing. We're just making sure we got all this caramel covered up. We got no pewter on it. You guys can also see that I'm using this green tape. I love this stuff. It's a good quality product. It's 3M. This tan, the tan that's on the masking paper, that's also 3M, but it sucks. And I screwed up. There we go. You can see too, I'm kind of just going over the edge of this tan tape, making sure some green is sticking down. Because sometimes I just don't trust this tan. It's kind of humid today, so the tape doesn't like to stick the way it should anyway. And we're just taping everything down real nice and tight to the existing paper. And there you go, no need to scuff it. It's brand new base coat. You can respray over the top of this within 24 hours, so they say. I don't really like to go more than 12. But there's your taping part of it. So now what I'll do, I'll go load up the gun to the pewter, and we'll start shooting the pewter. Okay, got the pewter and the gun, just like coat. And make sure you get up in the inner fender well there. Just like that. Repeat three times, three coats, and then you'll have all of your pewter on. Let me go finish the rest of this, and uh, then we'll come back. We'll put another coat on this, 
and then we'll do another coat off camera and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll unpaper and then we'll go ahead and clear it. Are you going to be painting it? All right, coat two. Yeah, we're going to paint the bottom of the You just want to make even passes back and forth. Make sure you get up on the lower rocker. Very important. Just nice, even passes. paper off of this caramel color and then we're going to see if we have a nice clean two-tone line. You just got to keep in mind too what paper that you put on so you're not ripping stuff off so you don't need to be ripping off yet. Have Owen out here checking over the work. <clears throat> now these two colors, they don't look that much different, but they're just subtle enough together where I think it's going to make a sharp looking two-tone. Okay? It's going to be one of those things where it's not bold, and you guys know some of the stuff I do, I kind of like that subtle look. I'm not out for all total crazy bling. Okay? This is the nice, subtle look. Now keep in mind it's dull. There's just base coat on it. Base coat does not dry shiny base coat dries dull. You put the clear coat on, that's what protects the base coat, and that's also what makes it shiny. Okay? So is what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some clear in the gun. I'm going to load it right up. I'm going to go grab a mask, and then I'm going to go ahead and clear this. And then you guys will see really the huge difference, hopefully, in the two colors, and then we'll do a reveal with all the papers and stuff off it here in a little bit. Alright, I'm wearing a mask. We're going to start laying the clear out.
same thing as last time. I'll do the other side. We'll turn it back on. And now we're just going to do coat free. Son bitch, tied out. All right, so I just did a quick walk around for you guys quietly because it's hard to talk in this mask. Um, so what we'll do, we'll let this set up a little bit. We'll derobe it. We'll take the papers off it. We're gonna take her clothes off, and then we'll show you what it looks like. Take our clothes. All two toned. Not take. Well, take take the vehicle's clothes off. The paper off it, of buddy. We're not talking dirty here. I don't think. Yeah. Excuse me. What you say? Dad, are you making a video now? No, I'm not making a video now. <laughs> Alright, I untaped this, the driver's side. We'll stand back, give you guys just an idea of what we got going on here. Okay? I like the two colors together, personally. I think they look good. Good and subtle. Looks a little different. Now, you remember the taping we did inside the door jams? See? A nice, solid, crisp line. That's what you want. You don't want no fuzzies. A nice, solid, crisp line. That's why I taped it the way I taped it. And I still have to mask the other side. And, uh, yeah. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Now you learned how to do a little two-tone hack and pack shop style. Y'all have a goody-goody. Later. Say later.